Hi everyone. I've been asked if you can't stencil onto epoxy resin. Now, I have seen some videos out there on this topic using either acrylic paints or mica powders, chameleon powders, all that sort of thing. I've also seen people using uh, like decoupage glue um, while it's still wet. All sorts of interesting ideas. What I couldn't find a video on was using size and gold leaf and glitter and things like that. Now, if anybody has done this sort of thing, please do drop the links for me down below in the in the uh, below the video in the comments. That would be amazing. Show everybody what's been done. That would be great. But as I said, I couldn't actually find any when I went looking. So forgive me if this isn't a first. I'm not pretending that it is. Um, so yeah, if there are other instances of this out there on YouTube, please do put the links for me below. Now, this is part of a collaboration with Donna from DNA Resin. Now, she's got a nice technique for stenciling onto resin as well that she has tried and tested. And so we will be linking up and both doing our videos kind of in collaboration. So look out at the end of this video and also down in the description of the video below where you'll find the link to Donna's video too. And so please do go and watch that and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Anyway, I've had a bit of an idea of a way I could actually stencil onto a resin piece and I just want to see if it works to be honest. <laughs> so let me introduce you to our stencil. Here it is. Um, I honestly can't remember where it is from. It will be either Amazon or Timu. I'll find you the link anyway, but it's just a normal stencil. I don't think it's self-adhesive or anything. So that's that. I'm going to leave it in the bag till I need it. And this is just a big flat square, uh, well, oblong mould. Uh, again, this was a cheapy one. And um, I've not used it yet. As you can see, it's still in the bag. So I'm, so I'm getting my resin mixed up. I've no idea how much this is going to take, but I've made quite a big pot. And this is Apex High Gloss. It's pretty shallow, so I could have actually used Apex One Coat. That's the two-hour demold one. But it's really warm in my craft room today. I think this is going to cure pretty quick anyway. And I've got more of High Gloss than I have of One Coat. So <laughs> we're just going to go straight in with the One Coat. Yeah, sorry, the High Gloss. Get my resin straight. Now I'm going to put the uh, mold to one side so I can put my cup down. What I'm going to put in here then is some black initially. I want it to almost look like a Chinese lacquered effect because of the dragon. Now I could do red. I was wondering about doing red, like a deep red. Um, but I think for what I'm doing black, maybe I might do a bit of red around the edges. All right, I think we're pretty much there. Now I'm going to decant some off into this, which is a set. <laughs> Oops, it's a silicon... Um, like fancy cake pot thing. <laughs> what do you call them? You know the little cakes? I don't really eat cakes, so I, I um as I always say, my waistline is due to inactivity and in beer. Um <laughs> right. So what I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna get my black mixed up and poured in to one side. Here we are. Now the black I am using is from just for you online. You can see how much I use this, and you can see how thick it is as well, can't you? So I'm just going to clean my stick off. I love this. It's so it's so very intense. I bet that'll do the whole pot, but I don't want it completely, completely opaque. I bet that might do it actually. That might go opaque um, because I want to put some black, a bit of black sparkle in it. I am going to put in some of this, which is just some random black glitter I've had for ages. No idea where it came from. But we are going to mix a load of that in and just a very tiny tiny bit of this which again i can't remember where it came from but it's not quite as black um it's got more holographic to it but just a little bit of that i just wanted to give the black a bit of something interesting there we go i don't know how much of that's going to show through the black because i'm going to stir it in thoroughly but we'll see and then I'm going to just dump it in the middle. Red satin pigment, that's it. And it's like a deep coppery red, if I can get the lid off. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's like a deep coppery red. You'll have seen this in some of my other videos. And I'm not going to use too much because you don't need too much. But that's okay. So don't forget the other side is going to be the top. Think. Unless this side looks exceptionally good. <laughs> 
it may or may not, we'll see. Okay, I've just come to check on this. It's uh, sort of 90% cured now, but look at that. I've got a bit of an amine, an I mean, is that how you pronounce it? Blush going on, I think. But that's not going to matter. If this ends up being a front, and looking at the drama that that's made, I'm trying to get this so the shine is in such a way that you can see it. But looking at the drama that that has made, gosh, it's shiny. You're getting more of a me than the you are otherwise in. I think this might end up being in the front. So I wonder how Donna's getting on with her part of this video. Don't forget this is a two-parter. Donna at DNA Resin is doing uh, her take on how you stencil onto resin as well. And I believe she's using a completely different technique to what I'm going to be using. So don't forget at the end of this video, I will put you a link for DNA Resin's um, their part of the collaboration too. And uh, also I'll pop the link down in the description below as well for you on this video. Right, I'll see you in a few more hours then. Now, I have no idea what that says. So in case those are proper words and I've got it up the wrong way, I'm not going to do that bit <laughs> because I want my stencil to go that direction, left to, dragon facing left to right. I don't know why I just do. So I'm going to just avoid this little bit of writing in case it's real <laughs> and to say something. Uh, I've also had to trim it down a little bit because it was a little bit too big for this tray and I've sprayed some spray mount on the back and we're just going to lay it down like so. Now I need to make sure it's stuck reasonably well. Go. This is our secret weapon, liquid glue and this is for doing gilding flakes so what we're going to do is just sponge it onto here and then we will be putting some gilding flakes on it. Now, of course, once you've put this down, just find a sponge. So here's the secret weapon. We'll be sponging it onto here. And once you've put it down, you can stick your gilding flakes onto it. So that is what we are going for. Now, it could be that you might want to try this with anything. You could use mica powder, you could use your chameleon flakes, you could use, this is interesting, this big cut out area here I wasn't expecting. Ah. Um, yeah, you, sorry, I've gone off on one again. You could use glitter because all sorts of things will stick to this. The only thing I would say is gilding flakes don't necessarily need uh, any sort of seal over the top whereas the other things do and I would say I'm going to put the seal over this anyway. Now I just want to make sure I've pressed this down properly and I'm worried I'm getting grease all over it so I'm going to put a bag on it and give it a rub. I could have got my roller actually from my Cricut machine. Would have been handy wouldn't it? But I thought if I put a plastic bag over it this is when the stencil came in. Now because I'm going to be sticking size all over this I'm there's a good chance I'm going to wreck this stencil because I honestly don't know how I'll get it off afterwards if anyone knows how to remove size from things you let me know I don't think it's a case of easily washing it off nor the spray mount on the back to be honest however this wasn't an expensive stencil and I'm for the sake of art I am going to sacrifice it so I'm putting a I don't know whether that's too much but I'm putting quite a bit in my little pot here and what we're going to do is just sponge it on I've got my little pot on one side there. Now I did actually have a proper sponge came with this, this kit. Uh, as usual, you know me, I don't know where it is, I've lost it. Now size is the stuff that professional gilding people use. Um, I've watched people gild the ceilings of stately homes and all sorts of mad huge projects with it. So what you do is you put it on and it's you can see it's white. It's almost got a bluish look to it, which is really handy because you can really see where you've been. Now you might be able to rub it on, I don't know, but I'm going for dabbing it on. And then as it dries, you need to leave it plenty of time to dry. Um, it will go clear. And once it's gone clear, it will be sticky and it will stay sticky. So it's not like one of those things where you've got to get it and it's just sticky enough and it's just right. It's none of that. You can just, 
give it an hour. It usually takes about 20 minutes, I find. You can just leave it. And once it's got any time after it's gone clear, you can go in with your gilding flakes, gilding sheets, you know, the sheets of it you can get, whatever you fancy. Now, I might go in with gilding sheets. Clearly, this is going to mean I'm going to end up gilding my stencil. <laughs> or, no, no, hang on, here's the thing. It won't, will it? I could take the stencil off, then do the gilding. Should we do that? Were you all shouting at me then, going, you stupid woman, to take your stencil off first? <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether I'm going to use the flakes or the sheets, actually. I'll probably, go in the, I'll probably go in with the flakes. If anybody tries this and does do it with sort of glitter or chameleon powders or anything else like that, you let me know. I'd love to see what, seriously, I would love to see what you do. Um, if you don't have a YouTube channel, so you can't link it up um, so everybody can see it by popping the your link when you do it into my video description, um, sorry, my video comments. If you can't do that, um, I uh, pop it on Discord. There's a, there's a Discord groups out there. Claire's Crafty Corner is probably one of the biggest and most active Discord groups. I have got one, um, but I'm not very active in it, to be honest. I'm mostly only active in the one that's for um, the one I set up for new YouTubers as like a support group. Um, but yeah, one way or another. Oh, I'll tell you what, my Facebook page. I'm pretty sure that's set up so anybody can post on it. You could pop it there. Why didn't I think of that in the first place? Right, I'm just going over this again because I want to make absolutely sure I haven't missed any bits. So this is probably a bit excessive, really. <laughs> uh, you know what? There's a lot of crafts that are less is more. I'm not very good at those. <laughs> <clears throat> So I'm just going to dab all over again. Can you see that's starting to go clear in places already? But because it's so blooming sticky, it should have adhered to the resin. So I'm just going to give it five minutes and then, yes, I will take the stencil off. And then we'll uh, leave it until it's gone completely clear. And come back and, uh, and have a play with the gold leafing. And I think I will just go for gold. I've got all sorts of different colours. But I think because we're going a bit, a little bit Chinese sort of, uh, or Japanese, which is it? How many claws has the dragon got? I forget um, which it is. I'll check it out for, before the next bit of this video. Chinese and Japanese dragons. Quick, easy way to tell them apart is how many claws they've got. This one's got four. Um, and I can't remember which that is. <laughs> I'll look it up. OK, that really should be covered by now, shouldn't it? So, while well, I just clean my little brush and my little bowl up, I think that'll probably have, uh, that'll have probably set enough for me to take the stencil off by then. I'm back, and yes, I can see that is curing up already. Did I mention um, that flat area here that wasn't as shiny and it looked a little bit oil slicky? That was what they call a mean blush. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that right. If you want to know what causes that, it is to do with humidity. And uh, that doesn't surprise me at the moment because it's really warm in my back bedroom, which is my craft room. And I've had so many projects on the go, it could have been a bit humid. If you want to see full chapter and verse on the science of me and blush, I'll put you the link to a video by Lou from Create and Bloom. She did a very short video recently explaining how it all works and there was a load of stuff in there that I, I didn't know. So, uh, yeah, I'll put you the link for that. Don't let me forget. If I ever forget to put any links down below that I've promised you, um, please shout because it, if I miss one, you know, I can soon go back in and add it. I do try to get them all in there. Right, now I'm going to peel this off, hopefully. Ta-da! There's that mean blush. I don't know if you can see that. There's a flat patch there. Um, now, little revelation I've just come across is that this size is water-based. Now, I think I might have taken that off too soon because I think that's going to blur. Hmm. Hmm. 
So, tell you what, let's go again. As I've discovered this is water-based, this tells me we can just go again. Look at that. And that is using one of my Wonder Wipes, which has sent it green. Isn't that strange? Anyway, I'm going to give this a good rinse off and we'll have another go. I've been and washed it. And yes, good news, people. That size does wash straight off. The glue I put on the other side, on the other hand, not so much. So I've now got sticky fingers and everything. So I'm going to put this down on here and we'll get it stuck again. And I think I'm going to spend a bit more time rubbing it down this time as well. And not use as much. I did, you know what? Oh, my life. I didn't use too much. Well, there might be a little bit of damp under this. <laughs> That's the only thing. I thought I dried it, but I'm going to see through the stencil. Maybe not so. Anyway, that should now be pressed down very well. I'm giving that some welly. Right. Should we do that again? There we are. Slight tackiness still to it, but like I said, most of the size actually has come off. Right, don't know what I've done with my little pot now. Oh, I went and washed it, didn't I? Let's get a different pot. This. this is incompetence at its best, isn't it? Right. Let's get another brush. Um, this one's seen better days, so sorry about the back of it. It's just that the first one's damp, um, so this bit's clean, that's all that matters. So please excuse my little brush thing, I need to get some more of these. Right, I'm going to blodge a bit off, I think I just overdid it. So, blodge a bit off to the side before I go in over the piece. And spread it a bit further and not worry about getting it on quite so thick. In the land of dreams and colours, where the resin crafters dwell A dragon came from above, to break the evil spell With shimmering scales of gold, and eyes so bright and green A garden so bold, protecting what's serene Precious light. The dragons watch they keep, keeping darkness out of sight. Oh. Right, I'm now going to pull this off and let's see if it's gone on a bit more evenly this time and hasn't leaked quite as much. Yeah, that's looking better. I'm still going to leave it longer though before I actually... Oh, because you can see there's still some of the blue sheen to it. So I'm going to leave it a little bit longer before I go in with my gold flake. Anyway, yeah, the whole thing looks a little bit matte from where I've cleaned it. But I think we're okay. There's some bits where I've got a bit of overspill. Here. Let's just have a little look, actually. Yeah, there are some bits where it's sleep it has seeped under. Probably where I put it on too thick yet again. I think what I will do is just go very, very carefully with a gold flake. I might be able to minimise some of that by just where I, you know, where I put it. 
It's either that or not use gold flake. I could actually just go in with glitter or chameleon powders or something like that, couldn't I? I'm still not happy that this has gone in as cleanly as I wanted. Because if it dry, if it, uh, you know, if I get it on the bits where it's overspilt, then obviously it's going to stick where I don't want it, isn't it? Hmm. A little bit of a clean up job, I think, is what's needed here. It's not bad, to be fair. That's a lot better than the first attempt. Also, might have just a little bit of an acceptance that it might not be perfect. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Claire's Crafty Corner always says, made me love not perfection. This is probably right there. Okay. So left it now. I've been tacky. Nice. I've been good. I haven't messed. I can't help thinking I am going to end up with the flakes where I don't want them. Because they do go everywhere. So do I use the flakes or not? I don't know. I think I might... Ah, this is what I was going to use. You know what? I think I might go in with a powder instead. I've lost my bottle about this, haven't I? Um, It's this area here. I think I've got the sticky where it shouldn't be. And you know what? Flakes are like... Oh, God. Just do it. Just do it, Tracy. Just do it. So this is a new jar and it's from Spectrum Noir. I'm going to push this out of the way initially because this will go everywhere. So let's do a bit of rearranging. Here we go, let's put this to one side and let's put this right over here. This is just that. Fantastic. I am wondering if, if the sheets of it would be easier, if glitter would be easier. You know what, I'm just going to do it and hope for the best. And I'm going to bring this over and then try and press it down. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Let's try a little area, shall we? And we'll see how this, this goes. Now really, you should be pressing this down with like a tissue or something. Isn't it shiny? It's fantastic stuff. Uh, brush. So what you do is you brush off the surplus. So... Let's just see what happens. Actually, it's messy. It's gone sticky all over. So I am not happy with that. That's a shame. I was really hoping that would work. OK, let's get that off and we'll just go in with some glitter. So this area might just have to stay. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, though, because it is staying. It is staying in some of the areas. That's still sticky. Right, I'm gonna have to let that dry off and, and, and stickyfy itself again. Okay, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try something different. Let's go in with the ethereal, oops, ethereal pigments from the tiny turner. I've got quite a set of these. I'm really disappointed. I really thought that would work. I think it probably will if I used a simpler sort of uh, Going with starlight, yeah. If I use a simpler design, this one's just such a fine fussy design. If I do something like a bit chunkier, I think we might be, we might do better. So we'll have another go at this at some point. Right, let's try this. This one's called Starlight, and it's a th an ethereal pigment, and it goes, it turns gold. And I am hoping that I'll be able to just brush off the surface. Or wipe off the surface, rather. Now, the thing is with this is it will go all over your resin. So, as we've seen in other makes, will be a need to definitely a need to wipe it off afterwards and take the surplus away oh god i hope this works i'm so convinced it would now if you get some of this stuff bear in mind you don't need much and it goes a hell of a long way this is a big area i wasn't intending to use it on such a big area as this okay 
that's that area. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to switch over to glitter. So let's put that to one side. So we've already got an area that won't match. So here we've got a really fine gold glitter and it's different gold again. We're going in with lots of different golds here. And I am just going to sprinkle and brush it around. And then there's going to be, that's looking promising. And then there's going to be, a, yeah, it's very promising. <laughs> and then there's going to be a big clean up job. Okay, people, my experimenting seems to have indicated that glitter is the way to go with this technique. And that it is probably a fairly valid technique. This glitter, by the way, is from Just For You Online. That powder was Tiny Turner, flakes were Spectrum Noir. Right, now this is going to be a case of tapping it off and it is going to go everywhere. So I'm going to tap it over here. And then let's get in and see if we can have a darn good cleanup. Because that should be well and truly pressed into our surface. So this is causing the most almighty glitter shower. <laughs> Oh yeah, glitter's the way to go. I'm still not entirely happy though. I really thought I'd get a lot more detail in there than this. However, I think the principle's sound. It's just a case of persevering. So I will do a smaller piece. So watch on because we'll have another go. Now I have done my experimenting. Oh, you know what? That is starting to show up. That is starting to show up. It's just a shame that I really hope the gilding stuff would have worked. I think I just made too much mess with the uh, with the size, unfortunately. Uh, this is a dry one. I'm just going to go and get some tissue and have another go. I did get a bit of that Chinese writing come through. See, oh, there we are. I didn't block that out very well, had I? Uh, so, I've got glitter where I shouldn't have. I've got messy bits that didn't really work. But you know what? Weirdly, I quite like it. Almost like an old, an old antique kind of look to it. This is worth another go, isn't it? What do you all think? I, I personally think it's worth another go at some point. So, yes, I think before I put this video out, I'll have a go at a smaller piece with a slightly less complex design. Because I think... I think I'm onto something here. Anyway, what I want, anyway, what I want to do first is let this dry off and get a top coat on it. I was going to pull it out and see what the other side looked like, which I haven't. This does also mean, of course, if the other side looks cool, we could do something with the other side. Anyway, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is just chuck another layer of resin in on this. So let me get all PPE'd up and we'll do that. There we go, a full on flood coat for you. Um, and I'm just going to leave this now. I'm going to leave it overnight. By morning, we should have something ready to look at. 
Now, tomorrow I am home making orders all day. Thank you so much to those who've been placing orders from my shop. Oh, I am so sorry for the delay. I've had a pretty horrible time lately and I am just so behind on everything. So, we'll catch up eventually. I really will. I'm kind of on it. And so while I'm making my orders tomorrow, I will make a smaller piece and we'll have another go at this with a slightly less complicated design. So I'm just going to tip the resin because this is now, this is now completely hardened. So I'll tip it back and forth a little bit. I'm sure some of the glitter is going to come loose and end up all over, floating all over the place. Yeah, I can see it is already. Don't care. got something interesting here it's not quite how I wanted it I really wanted something a bit more defined and a bit more a bit less messy oops look I'm pouring the resin over the edges now it's not messing Tracy there we are messing okay I will see you all in the morning we'll get this demolded and also be interested to see what the other side looks like I know that wasn't exactly what the project was all about Let's have a look. And yeah, I'll probably do something like coaster size, something a bit smaller and simpler. You know, like you're supposed to do, really. Start with something small and simple, then get all excited and do a big thing. <laughs> so, yes, I'll see you all in the morning. Well, as you can see with the sunlight, bedroom window here, uh, my craft room, as it is now known as. Um, this has come out nice and shiny and lovely. And uh, yeah, it sort of worked. So this makes me think I should have another go, see if we can do something better. First thing to do is demold this and see what the other side looks like, because it could be, be that we can have another go on the other side. Also, as I said, I'm going to do a smaller piece. So let's get organised and we'll do all of that. OK, let's have a look at the other side. Moulds come off nice and clean. Uh, that's rather nice, isn't it? That would make a nice like placemat or something. Yeah, let's have a look at the other side. Now that's just gone solid glitter. So that hasn't really done what I hoped. Okay, it's nice though. So I think what we've ended up with is something nice. Right, let me uh, have another go, but I'm going to do a smaller piece this time. I do like this, but I just wanted a more clean result from the stencil. Okay, I'm going to get a coaster out. Okay, this time I'm mixing up some black and we will get that chucked in and just so we've got our black surface and I'm just going to leave it black this time. I just want to get proof of the uh, proof of concept really. So I'm just going to lob this in and uh, I'll see you when it's cured in a few hours. Right then, let's have another go. As you can see I found a, a pretty chunky big stencil. And I've put my spray mount on. So I'm just going to pat that down. Make sure as much as I can that it's stuck evenly. Uh, looking for a plastic bag again. Okay. Yeah. Right, hopefully that's stuck down pretty well. And here we go again. I'm going to speed this all up because you don't want to see the same thing over and over again, do you now? So, probably put too much size in my pot there. But away we go again. I'm going to try to use a bit less this time. I'm going to blot it off on a tissue. Okay, that's gone clear now, and I've had a brainwave. Instead of trying to use the gilding flakes or the glitter, what about we use an actual sheet of gilding foil? Now this stuff is very fine, and quite fiddly to work with, which side up. 
don't think it matters too much but let's just put that on completely and I'm, as you can see this time I am leaving the stencil on let's just see what happens we're going to brush it down with my finger first of all now obviously we've got some space that we need to do still I'll tell you what let's do should we do the rest with some flakes and the rest of some and the remaining bit with some glitter um just just for the sake of uh, having like a bit of a sampler really um yeah I'm gonna end up with a really odd result aren't I but hey that's more than enough oh this stuff goes everywhere big soft brush so we're going to work that down into there we're going to spread this out and see how far it goes quite a long way by the look of it because I did put rather a lot on there And then the last bit will just go straight across with glitter. I'm going to have such a glittery mess to clean up in here. It's ridiculous. Right. This shouldn't take much doing, should it? <laughs> and let's go across the whole thing with the glitter as well, in case I missed any bits. Right. What we're going to do now then is try to brush and shake off the surplus and then we'll take the stencil off. So I'm going around the edges kind of with a bit of a, a bouncing motion with the intention that it'll either wrap the gold down the sides or it'll take it off. <laughs> what a glittery mess! Right, I'm going to try and tip it up now and shake, tap and shake a bit off. Now let's see what happens. It's more on me than on the piece. it's worked. Let's see if I can wash my stencil off of course. Now let's have a closer look. There's a bit there where I stuck my finger in it by the way. Don't worry if you can see a bit of a mistake. But isn't that nice? So it looks to me as the flakes worked. The sheet and the glitter seem to have worked the best simply because they've been a bit more accurate in where they've gone. Anyway, I'm going to just let that sit for a little bit and then we'll just top coat it. In the meantime, I'm going to give, have a bit of a clean up because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I need to wash my hands. <laughs> you can see in, uh, in cleaning it off, I not only got it all over me and everywhere, um, but I also got it in, bit, in areas I didn't want. And I've just tried to take that back off with tape and it wasn't really working. So I've decided to just ignore it. <laughs> in typical Tracy style. Now I'm going to top coat this and I'm going to top coat it with some Apex One Coat because for a really shallow top coat pour that's the perfect stuff and it cures incredibly quickly. So I'm just going to mix some of that up. You can probably see how thick this stuff is and that's why it cures so fast. Now it's two hour demold <laughs> and uh, in the warmth of my craft room today, it's like summer has suddenly hit my craft room. It's really warm, so this is going to cure very quickly. It's only uh, intended for very shallow pores, so coasters and things like that, it's absolutely perfect for. And with this high viscosity, of course, it's very, very good for top coating things. I think that's probably why they called it one coat. Hmm. If anybody wants some of this stuff as well, um, yeah, obviously, as I said earlier, all the links for absolutely everything I've been using will be down in the uh, description of the video below. Um, the, res the resins, I will put a link uh, on the screen as well, a QR code. Everything else, there's just too many different bits and pieces, so I'll just pop them into the video description for you. And I think, yes, yeah, some of this I've got discount codes for for you. Where I have, I'll put the discount code in as well, into the link. The glitter was from Just For You Online, as is the resin. Just, sorry, I'm just thinking aloud here. The flakes and the foil were from uh, Crafters Companion, I think. So I'll put you the link for those, although I'm not an affiliate for them, so I don't have a discount code, I'm afraid. 
excuse any background noise obviously i've got my window wide open and the, the people are being noisy around my state today because they're all home it's sunday <laughs> and they're all out having fun in their cars and on their bikes What else have we used? Stencil. Um, either Amazon or Timu. I can't. I really can't remember with the stencils. I'll see if I can find them for you. Oh yes, the colours I used in the big tray piece. Those are from Just For You Online as well, weren't they? So yeah. Got a discount code for you on those two. Join Tracy in the craft room where she talks to herself. And imagines that you're all talking back. Now, like I said, this is going to cure very quickly. So we should have a final result on this. And uh, yeah, I, th I think my verdict is... Yes, you can stencil um, with size and use various glitters, powders, foils, whatever you want to stick onto the size. Uh, second part of that verdict is though it's a little bit fiddly and it might take a bit of experimenting with uh, how you apply your size, how long you leave the stencil on, you know, what stage you take it off, uh, how you then do a clean up afterwards, as we've seen. I kind of Made have done that a bit messy, but the result's quite nice, I think. So, but yes, as a proof of concept, it can be done. So, I hope this gets everyone thinking. I don't know if anybody's done this before, I couldn't find it on YouTube. Um, if anybody has, then please drop the link down in my uh, comments below so that everybody can see it because I'd like to see um, if people have done it before, how, how they've done it, how they've got on, what their ideas were. Let's share. Um, so, let me know. While I'm finishing this one off then, just want to say a bit, a big hello to my channel members. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you everyone who watches my videos all the way through. And those who subscribe, comment and all that sort of thing. It really is so much appreciated. Um, I hope I tell you that enough. I really do. So thank you for everything, you wonderful crafty gang. There we go. I think I'm pushing my luck now with the... Um, height of this dome so I'm going to stop now and I will see you in I will leave it a couple of hours even though I think it'll cure a lot quicker than that today um so I'll see you in a couple of a couple of hours and uh, we'll have a final look at our pieces and uh, yeah see what we think of the final outcome don't forget everyone, I will be putting the link to Donna at DNA Resin, um, her take on stenciling on resin. Now I know she's done hers before, um, so she kind of knows what she's doing rather better than I do. I'm making it up as I go along here, as you know, as I often do. I don't tend to rehearse, by the way. I tend to just dive in and do it and film it, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, or if bits of it do and bits of it don't, um, what you are seeing is my first attempt usually. It's very, very... You know what, I could probably count on one hand the times I've tried something before filming it. There's a couple of things I've done before in in, um, yeah, in the previous life, sort of thing, before YouTube. So I have an idea they'll work. But much of what you see, nah. I just think it will and or think it might. <laughs> do it and that's what you see. <laughs> oh dear. Warts and all, as they say. Right, I'll see you in a couple of hours then. So here, then, here we are then. We have a result on that tile. The foil sheet has bubbled in a couple of places, but I have to say the glitter and the flakes have done a great job. So I think principle proven to work. I'm sure you'll do a better job of it than me, but uh, hopefully that's given you some ideas. Let's have a final look at the big piece as well. So although it hasn't actually gone as, it is not as clean a stencil effect as I would have liked, I still think it's rather interesting and nice. So 
again, it hasn't turned out exactly how I intended, but all the same, um, again, I think we've got something interesting that might give you some ideas too. So I hope you like this one then, folks. Do give me a thumbs up if you have, and I look forward to seeing you for the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.